Uh, tonight's topic is called travel in the flesh. Travel in the flesh. That's tonight's topic. Travel in the flesh. Let's open up with the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 11. Let's read that. First book of Corinthians chapter 1 verse 11. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that these, that they are contentions among you. That they are what? Contentions among you. That they are contentions among you. Among the brethren, contentions, confusion, fightings, wars among the brethren. That's what our foremother Chloe reported unto the apostle Paul, because there was divisions in the church divisions among the 12, the, the 12 tribes of Israel. Watch this. Give me the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. There was contentions among us as it is today because there's contentions, there's fightings, you understand, among brothers and sisters. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. That's why the apostle Paul said this thing right here. Read that. The book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. Come on. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Endeavoring, endeavoring, meaning fight. Fight to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. What's the key word in that verse? Unity. Being one. Because in what we just read in the first book, first book of Corinthians chapter 1 verse 11, it wasn't like that. That's why the apostle Paul had to bring this up. Because that was a common thing among the nation of Israel. Among the blacks, Bantus, Hispanics, Native American Indians. That's a common disease among us. We don't get we don't get along. To, we don't know how to work well together. We don't get along. Even with the scriptures in our hands, we're still breaking God's commandments. We still want to humble down what is written in this book. Read it again. Verse 3. The book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. Come on. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. In the bond of peace. The unity of the spirit. What's that word right there? Read that word. The unity of the unity. spirit. Unity. Unity. That's the word we're looking for. Unity. You understand? So trouble in the flesh, you can understand why there's fightings and wars among us. We want to understand that this day. Okay? Read that again, verse 3. Watch this. The book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. Come on. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. In the bond of peace. So the, the, the apostle Paul was teaching unity among the, among the brethren. Unity among the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10. Let's go back there. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10. Read that. First book of Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10. Come on. Now I beseech you brethren. By the name of our Lord Jesus. That ye all speak the same thing. Read that the again, David, read that again. Hold on, read, read the verse again. Read it right. Come on. First book of Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10. Now Come I on. beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. that ye all speak the same thing. That ye what? That ye all speak the same thing. That we all speak the same thing. That there be no contentions among us. That's why he said you must keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Go ahead. That he all speak the same thing mm -hmm. and that there be no divisions among you. That there be no divisions among you, which is what? Which is common amongst us. Come on. But that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and mm -hmm. in the same judgment. You see that thing? That we be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. We must all speak the same thing. That's what he's saying right there. What brings us together? is the laws of God. Give me that in Baruch 437. This is what brings us together. God's commandments. You understand? The covenant of salt. Read what you got. Baruch 437. The book of Baruch. Chapter 4. Verses 37. Come on. Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away. They come together together from the east to the west. By the word of the Holy One, rejoicing mm -hmm. in the glory of God. So now what's going to bring us together, what's going to gather us together in, in the bond of peace, the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace is the word of God. God's commandments is what's going to bring us together. 
that we be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So the question is, what causes divisions then? What is the spirit that causes, con what is the spirit of contentious? Where does it come from? What is the root cause of the spirit of contention? You understand? Because that is something that is prevalent among us. You're always having a problem. There's a, there's a brother that has a problem with that brother, that sister. That sister has a problem with that sister right there. These two don't get along. Why? Don't nobody can explain it. You understand? Some brothers and sisters have secret hatred towards their brother. You understand? They hate their brother in their heart, but they don't want to say They don't want to say it. And a lot of the times, these things are visible when correction comes out. You understand? When correction comes out, you see what brothers and sisters are made of. Okay? Give me Baruch. Give me Ecclesiasticus. Give me Ecclesiasticus 10, verse 25. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 10, verse 25. Come on. Unto the servant that is wise. I, hold on. Unto the what? Unto the servant that is wise. And to the servant that is wise. So the subject matter is about a wise servant. Not just a servant, a wise servant. Go ahead. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 25. And to the servant that is wise, shall they that are free do service. You see that thing? A servant that is wise, they're going to be free to do the service of the Most High God. You don't have to talk to them all the time. Meaning what? You don't have to repeat the same thing over and over unto them. Because they are wise servant. They understand what time it is. You don't have to repeat things over and over. Read again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 25. And to the servant that is wise, shall they do, shall they that are free do service? Meaning what? They are proactive. They take initiative. Go ahead. And he that hath knowledge will not grudge when he is reformed. You see that part right there? He that hath knowledge. What is the knowledge? Give me that in Malachi 2 verse 7. He that hath knowledge will not grudge when he's reformed, when he's changed. In order for you to change, you need God's commandments. You need discipline, consistency. That's what you need. Read what you got. Malachi 2, verse 7. The book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 7. Come on. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. Should keep what? Knowledge. Should keep knowledge. Knowledge is a subject matter. Come on. And they should seek the law at his mouth. So now the Most High God in explain what the knowledge is. The law. The knowledge of the Most High God is his laws. Go back to where he was at. Sirach 10 verse 25. The book of Ecclesiastes of the 10 verse 25. Come on. Unto the servant that is wise shall mm -hmm. they that are free to service. And he, really? that, and he that hath knowledge will not grudge when he is a thing. He that hath knowledge, we that has, he that has God's commandments, because remember, this is a wise servant. What makes this servant wise? The knowledge that of the most high God that he possesses. The spirit of God upon him. He says he will not grudge when he's reformed, when he's changed, when he's corrected, when he's given counsel, he will not grudge. He will not going to hold a grudge. Give me that in James chapter 5, verse 9. James chapter 5, verse 9. The book of James, chapter 5, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Grudge not one against another. What did the Bible say? Grudge not one against another, brethren. So you see what the Bible is saying? This is, a, this is a civil law. You understand? It says, grudge not. This is a commandment. Grudge not one against another. Which law does this fall unto? Anyone? Which commandment is this? Which commandment is this? Let me hear you, uh, brother, brother Nkanka. Okay, okay, let's do things in order. If you don't raise your hand, I'm not going to recognize you. Uh, brother Nkanka, let me hear you. Yes, sir. Leviticus 19, verse 17. Let's get there. Leviticus 19, verse 17. The book of Leviticus. Chapter 19, verse 17. Come on. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Come on, next verse. Thou shalt not avenge, no mm -hmm. bear any grudge. No do what? No bear any grudge. 
So this is the verse we actually want. With this verse 18 is the point. Read verse 18 again. The book of Leviticus chapter 19 verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge, nor pay any grudge against the children of thy people. Come on. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. You see that thing? But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. It says, no, bear any grudge against the children of thy people. That's the precept. Drop verse 17, write down verse 18. Verse 18 is the key precept we want. Okay, let's go back. James chapter 5, verse 9. Read that. The, the book of James chapter 5, verse 9. Come on. Grudge not one against another, brethren, mm -hmm. lest ye be condemned. You see, be what? Lest ye be condemned. Lest ye be condemned. That Lest ye be condemned means what? Lest the Lord kill you. That's condemnation. Lest the Lord kill you because you are not walking in the spirit. You are walking in the flesh. Give me Romans 8 and 1. Watch this. Romans chapter 8. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Come on. There is therefore now no condemnation to mm -hmm. them which are in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus. Come on. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the what? spirit. Who do what? Walk not after the flesh, but mm -hmm. after the spirit. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So the condemnation will only come upon you if you're walking in the flesh. If you're walking in the spirit, condemnation will not come upon you. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. Go back to James chapter 5 verse 9 now. If you walk in the flesh, you will get condemnation. This is a conditional statement. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You walk after the spirit, which is, God, which is God's laws, there will be no condemnation. You understand? But if you have grudges against your brother, against your sister, guess what? The Lord will bring condemnation on you. Judgment. You understand? Because you don't love your neighbor as yourself. According to Leviticus 19 verse 18, it says, grudge not against the children of thy people. I am the Lord. Go back to where was that? James 5 verse 9. The book of James 5 verse 9. Come on. Grudge not one against another. Mm -hmm. Brethren, lest ye be condemned. Come on. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. You see that thing right there? Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Who's the judge? Christ. You understand? Christ is the judge. So he says we must not grudge one against another. You understand? But we need to understand where these, these grudge, holding a grudge against your brother, having secret hatred against your brother, secretly envying your neighbor. Where does these things come from? Watch this. Give me the book of James chapter 4 verse 1. James chapter 4 verse 1. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 1. From hey. whence come wars and fightings among you? Mm -hmm. Come they not hence, even of your lusts, that war in your members? This is, a, this is a heavy, heavy book right here. Pay attention. Read again, verse 1. Watch this. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 1. Come on. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Stop right there. It says, from whence come wars and fightings among you? Wars and contention among men and women, contention among husband and wives, contention among brother and brother, sister and sister. Where do these wars and fightings come about? Where do they come from? What's the root cause? He's asking. Read again. The book of James chapter 4 verse 1. From come whence come wars and fightings among you? He's going to tell you where they come from. Go ahead. Come they not hence? Come even. they not what? Hold on. Come they not what? Come they not hence? So he says, come they not hence? He's going to tell you where they come from. Go ahead. Come they not hence? Even of mm -hmm. your love? Indeed. Even meaning indeed is going to tell you where they come from. Read. Of your lusts that war in your members? You see where he's telling you where they come from? Lusts. Lusts. The reason why brothers and sisters are always fighting, husband and wives are always fighting, proving or not, they are fighting, they are married, or they are proving. There's always contention. There's always disagreements. There's always fights and arguments. Is because of what? The lust that war in their members. It's because of lust. That's why they are fighting. The one brother, you have a lust that you, you don't want to, you, 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 you are unable to fulfill. So you take it out on your spouse and vice versa. 
You have a lust that you are unable to fulfill. So guess what? You fight with your neighbor. You deceive your neighbor. Why? Because you have a lust that is not fulfilled. So you're going to do, you're going to what? You're going to break God's commandments to fulfill that lust. That's where the wars and fightings come about. Read that again, verse, verse 1. Come on. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 1. From hey. whence come wars and fightings among you? Uh -huh. Come they not hence, even of your lust that war in your members? Even of your lust that war in your members. Let's see the lust that war in your members. Give me that in Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Colossians 3, verse 5. Watch this. These are the lust that war in our members. Read that. The book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. It says do what? Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. To mortify means to deaden, means to kill. It says kill, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Those last that were in your members is going to tell us, is going to, the Apostle Paul is going to give us a few members, you understand? A few, a few lusts that war in our members. The members is not talking about men and women. No, it's talking about those lusts. You understand? Read. Fornication. Fornication, that's one of them. Fornication, those are the lusts that war in your member. That's why men and women, they fight one with another. They grudge one against another. They speak evil one against another. They don't want to forgive their brother, their neighbor. No forgiveness. You understand? Why? Because these are the lusts that war in their members. Okay? Read that part again. Read it again from the top. The book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Multiply therefore your members which are upon the earth. Read. Fornication. Come on. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. Go ahead. Inordinate affection. Inordinate affection. That's evil sexual all lusts and all that come on evil concupiscence evil sexual desires go ahead strong and sexual desires evil concupiscence is strong sexual desires that are outside of god's laws go ahead and covetousness and what and covetousness covetousness you see that thing covetousness so these are some of the members the, the members the last that were in our members that's why men and women always be arguing because none of them, one of them or both of them have a lust that is warring in their members, meaning in their spirit, and they don't want to let it go. They don't want to repent from, they want to fulfill it. And the reason why they are fighting is because they cannot fulfill it. Hence the fight, hence the arguments. Just be brother, just be studying an argument out of nowhere. Sister, just be studying an argument out of nowhere because there's a lust that they don't want to repent from, that's why they always be fighting. One minute they are fighting, another minute they are okay. One minute they are arguing, another minute they are, why? Why is that? It's because of the lusts that war in their members, because they don't want to repent off of those lusts. They want to fulfill them. And the situation that they are in is preventing them from fulfilling those lusts, hence the fights and the, the wars and the fightings among them. Read that again, verse 5. The book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Come on. Mortify therefore, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Fornication, right. uncleanness, mm -hmm. inordinate affection. Come on. Evil concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry. And covetousness, which is idolatry. Meaning what? The reason why there's 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 confusion in the marriages. There's confusion in the brothers, brother and sisters' relationships and all that is because of what? Idolatry. All of these are idols that they've been listed here. All these are idols. You understand? Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14, verse 26. Watch this. The reason why there's wars and fightings among men and women, husband and wives, brother and brother, sister and sister, is because of what? Idolatry, idol worship. Those are the lusts that war in your members. Okay, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 26. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 26. Come on. Disquieting of good men. Mm -hmm. Forgetfulness of good turns. Come on. Defiling of souls. Changing of kind. Mm. Disorder in marriages. 
disorder in marriages. So souls are being defiled. You understand changing of kind. Men want to be women. Women want to be men. And they might not necessarily have to go out and go to the doctor or to the hospital to do surgery. No, the sister just have to wear pants. Brother just have to put a dress on or shave his beard. You see that part right there? Changing of kind. Brother shaving his beard off, he wants to be a woman. Sister putting pants on, she wants to be a man. Changing of kind. Read. Changing of kind. Mm -hmm. Disorder in marriages. Disorder in marriages. What's causing the disorder? The, the lusts that war in their members. Read. Adultery. Adultery. You see where it comes about? You understand? Because of the lusts that war in your members. You, you are married, you commit adultery. Why? Because your wife doesn't satisfy you. Your husband don't satisfy you. Because you don't understand why you are married in the first place. You don't understand the covenant of marriage. You don't respect and honor marriage as God ordained it. That's why you, it's easy for you to go outside of your marriage or you are married, but you are still looking at other men. You are married, but the way you move is like you are still single. You are still looking out there because of what? Because of the lusts that you did not fulfill. Now you want to fulfill them while you are in the marriage. You see that thing? Read that part again, verse 26. Was the Solomon, chapter 15, verse 26, disquieting of good men, forgetfulness of good turns, defiling of souls, mm -hmm. changing of kind, disorder in marriages, mm -hmm. adultery, and shameless uncleanness. And shameless uncleanness. You're going to go into all manner of uncleanness. Why? Because you want to fulfill that filthy lust. You're going to do it anyway. You understand? Some people, they are the, the, the idol they worship is lies, deceit. Some brothers and sisters, the, the, the idol that they worship is what? Money. You understand? Power. You understand? This hatred. Envy. That's their idol they worship. Jump up to verse 24. They kept neither lives nor marriages in any longer undefiled. You see that thing? They did not keep their lives, nor the marriages that they were in are no longer undefiled. Why? Because of the worshipping of idols. Idolatry. Come on. But either one slew another traitorously. You see that thing? They won, meaning they devour one another. You devour each other. You know what means to devour? is to destroy. You destroy one another. Okay? You destroy. You don't want to build a brother. Build a sister, you don't want to build yourself up. Instead, because you don't want to build yourself up, you will devour the next man, the next brother, the next sister. Okay, read that again, verse 24. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 24. Mm -hmm. They keep neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled. Come on. But either one slew another traitorously. Traitorously, go ahead. Oh, Come on. Either one slew one another traitorously or grieved them by adultery. Or grieved him by adultery. Jump down to verse 12 now. Read verse 12. This is this is the this is the, the, the idolatry that is going on. What, that, that is causing men and women to fight and war amongst themselves. Verse 12. Watch this. Was the Solomon chapter 14, verse 12. For mm -hmm. the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. What beginning of what? Spiritual fornication. The beginning of spiritual fornication. You fornicate with your spirit, with your mind. You understand? You are, you are, you are lasting with your mind. You are coveting with your mind. And the more you covet, the more you lust, you desire to have those things. Guess what? It turns into worship. That's what the Lord is saying. And when it turns into worship, the decision-making process will change because they will support that which you desire and worship. Okay? Verse 12 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 12. Come on. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. Read. And the invention of them, the corruption of life. The invention of them, meaning the imagination of them, because men have to in invent these things. Where does the invention come from? The mind. The mind has to imagine these evil things and bring them to life. That's why it says the invention of them, the corruption of life. Before it was invented, it was thought upon. It was imagined. 
it was calculated in the head, then it was put down on paper to be what? To be built and to be worshipped. And that's what's going on today. That's why men and women, they're always having grudges. You understand? You check a sister, a sister will hate you for days. Why? Because she does, what is the idol she worships? Rebellion. What is the idol she worships? Hate, hatred of submission. Is that simple? You understand? You brothers that are married, you know what I'm talking about. You understand? Correction. You see, sisters don't want to be corrected. When you correct the sister, they will secretly develop hatred against you. Because why? Because they are not about the book. Brothers also, you correct them, the brothers start to move in a, in a different spirit now. And the thing that we can't see, I can see it. We can see these things. Why? Because your mind is not right. You get corrected, you must, you know what? This is some evil stuff I'm doing. Let me get myself right. You see, if you move in that spirit, guess what? When correction comes, it will what? It will be well received. And that's how you are going to, you're not going to grudge when you are reformed. Like we read in Sirach 10, 25. You're not going to grudge when you are reformed. That reformation comes with what? It's change. What does that? The laws of God. If you're a wise servant, you're not going to hold any grudges when you are reformed. That's what, that's the point. Go back to Colossians 3, verse 5 now. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Read what you got. Come on. The book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 5. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. You see that thing? Spiritual fornication. Spiritual fornication. You understand? Spiritual and physical. But a lot of the times is spiritual because if 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 a simpleton is looking is looking at the situation, they don't want to say, but I don't see him bowing down to a Buddha right there. I don't see him bowing down to a cross right there. I don't see him bowing down to a cover stone. So where's the idol? The idol is in the mind, anger, hatred, deceit, lies. You understand? Procrastination, making empty promises and so forth. Those are idols. You understand? Moving slow, that's, a, that's an idol right there. Laziness, slothfulness, those are idols. You understand? Grudging. Because when you grudge, what are you really creating? What spirit are you moving in? The spirit of hatred. So that's your idol. Hatred is your idol that you worship. And you worship something, you're going to what? It comes with these rules and regulations and guidelines. You're going to follow all of the above. Okay? Go back to James chapter 4. James 4, verse 1 again. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 1. Verse 1. Come on. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 1. Three. From whence comes wars and fightings among you? Mm -hmm. Come they not hence, even of your lusts that war in your members? Even of your lusts that war in your members? Come on. Ye lust and have not. Mm -hmm. Ye kill and desire to have. Come on. And cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. You see what James is saying? He's telling you exactly, listen, this, this chapter right here, is says, ye lust and have not. The lust goes into what you desire. You understand? Ye kill and desire to have. Let's, get, let's deal with that, the kill. It says, ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have. Watch this. Give me first John chapter 3, verse 15. Watch this. First John chapter 3, verse 15. He says, ye kill and desire to have. First book of John chapter 3, verse 53. Huh? No, 15, 15. First John 3, verse 15. First John chapter 3, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. You see that thing? If you hate your brother, you are a murderer. You hate your brother, he says, ye kill and desire to have. You will go as far as to hate your neighbor just so that you can get access to that thing that what? That is not going to be, is, is only going to benefit you and your lusts. That's it. You understand? Read that part again. The first book of John chapter 3 verse 15. Whosoever hey. hated his brother is a murderer. Mm -hmm. And you know that no murderer had eternal life abiding in him. You see that thing right there? So this killing goes into hatred. This killing goes into hatred. I'm going to explain what I mean by that. 
Give me Leviticus 19 verse 17 now. Watch this. Leviticus 19 verse 17. The book of Leviticus chapter 19 verse 17. Read. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt not. That's a commandment. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Come on. And shalt in anyone rebuke thy neighbor mm -hmm. and not suffer sin upon him. So you see that part right there when it says and not suffer sin upon him. So guess what? When Because you are moving in the spirit of lust and covetousness, guess what? You're going to suffer sin upon your neighbor because you want access to something. You know, you desire and you yet you receive not. You, you desire it, but you can't get access to it. You're going to suffer sin upon your neighbor to get it. You see that thing? You will rather cause your neighbor to be in the midst of sin because you want something that you're not supposed to have or you want something because you want to fulfill the lust that is within you. Instead of dealing with that lust, you will rather suffer sin upon your neighbor. You will rather allow your brother to what? You're going to cause your brother to sin or your sisters to sin. Why? Because of your lusts that war in your members that you are not examining. Okay? That's where the fighting comes from. That's where the deceit and the lies, that's where they come from. Because of lusts. You understand? Read that again, verse 17. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Read. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and mm -hmm. not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Like I was mentioning, some brothers will what? Give me that in Exodus 20. Okay, Exodus 20. This is the commandment right here. Okay, give me that in Exodus 20, verse 13. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verses 13. Read. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart and not suffer sin upon him. That's a commandment right there. You understand? That's a commandment. What commandment is this? What number of the commandment is this on the list? Soldier hair guy, let me hear you. Number six, sir. Soldier number hair six. guy. Which oh. commandment is this? Number six, sir. All praises. Okay, let's go back. First John 3, verse 15. First book of John, chapter 3. Verse 9. Verse 15. Come on. First book of John 3, verse 15. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And he know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. No murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Meaning what? You hate your brother in your heart? Guess what? The things that you desire, you are not going to receive them because what? You have a hatred in your heart for your brother. And you don't care, you will suffer sin upon your neighbor to get what you want. Go back to James now, chapter 4, verse 2 again. James 4, verse 2. Watch this. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 2. Read. Ye laugh, and ye have not. Ye kill, and desire to have, and mm -hmm. cannot obtain. Cannot what? Ye fight in war, and cannot obtain. You see that thing? It says, and desire to have, and cannot obtain. You cannot obtain the things that you lust after, the things that you desire. You understand? But you are willing to kill for them. You're willing to hate your brother in your heart to get it. Okay, come on. You fight in war. Yet you have not because you ask not. Because you ask not. But he's going to tell you what he means when he says, because you ask not. Next verse. Come on. He ask and receive not. You do what? He ask and receive not. He says, you ask and receive not. Verse 2 says, Ye, and he says, yet ye have not because you ask not. Now James is saying, ye ask and receive not. You are asking for the things that you lust after, the things that you want. You're willing to hate your brother and suffer sin upon him to, to get them. But you cannot obtain. Ye ask and receive not. Go ahead. Ye ask and receive not. Mm -hmm. Because you ask amiss. Because you ask amiss. You're not asking it for the right reasons. You understand? Whatever you ask him for is not for the betterment of your people. It's the betterment of yourself. Go ahead. That ye may consume it upon your lusts. You see that? Ah, that's the answer right there. That you may consume it 
upon your lust. That's why you ask for it, you don't receive it. You understand? You lust after it, you don't get it. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain it. Why? Because you want to consume it upon your lusts. Plural. Not one, not lust. Lusts. Because there's multiple lusts that are warring in your members that you don't want to repent from. That's why the Lord, when you ask, he says, I'm not going to give it to you. You understand? Matthew 21 verse 22. Watch this. He says, he ask and receive not. Let's see what it means to ask. Okay, watch this. Matthew 21 verse 22. Read that. The book of Matthew 21 verse 22. Read. And all things whatsoever ye ask, and all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. You see that thing? And it says, and all things whatsoever ye ask in prayer. So that's what it means to ask. Go back to James now. 4, verse 3 again. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 3. Come on. Ye ask and receive not. Ye pray, ye pray, ye pray, but the Lord don't answer your prayers. You ask and receive not. You pray and the Lord don't answer your prayers. You be praying, you say, I'm praying, I'm fasting. You understand? I've been praying, I'm fasting, I'm going to camp, I'm doing X, Y, and Z, but the Lord is not answering my prayers. What's the problem? Read again verse 3 so we can understand where the problem is at. Okay, read that. The book of James chapter 4 verse 3. Read. He ask and receive not because he ask amiss. Because you ask amiss. Because you what? Because you ask amiss. Because you ask amiss. Let's see what the definition of the word amiss. Amiss. Okay. The definition of the word amiss. Let's get the definition of this word. Okay. Okay. The definition of the word amiss. It says not quite right, inappropriate, or out of place. Wrong. These are sim these are these are synonyms now. Wrong. Ori, faulty, out of order, defective, unsatisfactory, incorrect, unto what? Adrift, astray, inappropriate, improper, unsuitable. Okay? Wrongly or inappropriately. So that's what the word amiss means. Not quite right. Inappropriate. You understand? Wrong. So read that verse again. James 4 verse 3. The book of James chapter 4 verse 3. Read ye ask and receive not because you ask amiss because you, want, you ask, hold on because you ask amiss you ask amiss meaning your prayers are inappropriate your prayers are out of place your prayers are faulty you understand they are improper prayers you're not praying the prayers that you are praying is there is the reason why the objective or the spirit behind your prayer is what is consumption of what you will receive from the most high god upon your lusts that war in your members that's why when you pray the lord don't answer your prayers you fast the lord don't change nothing because of what because of your lusts that war in your members read that again verse three the book of james verse three you ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lusts because that you may consume it upon your lusts. Because the most said God, yeah, you'll be asking, because I, we brought it last about this before. You'll be asking the Lord for one thing, but in your mind, you have something different. The Lord don't, don't listen to what you are saying. He checks your mind out. Hmm, he's asking for this, but this is what's in his mind. I'm not going to answer you. Until you confess what that thing that is in your mind that's troubling you, that you need to get rid of, I'm not going to answer your prayers. You're wasting your time. I'm not going to hear nothing you say. Why? Because your mind, your lips are saying one thing, but your spirit is in a different, completely different state that is contrary to what's written in this Bible. Watch this. Give me the book of Jeremiah. Okay. Give me Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 9. Read. The heart is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked. Who mm -hmm. can know it? He says the heart is deceitful. The mind. The mind is deceitful. Because you deceive yourself, you're going to be inclined to think you can deceive the most high. Okay? So the mind is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Watch the next verse now. Who can know it? The Lord knows it. Go ahead. 
I, the Lord, search the heart. What did the Lord do? I, the Lord, search the heart. The most high God says, he searches your mind. Yeah, you say something with your lips, but your mind, that's where it says, that's, where, that's what I look at. I look at your mind. Go ahead. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins. He says, Even. he's going to try you. Hold on. He's going to try your mind. He's going to try your mind. Go ahead. Even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. That's your reins. Because what's on your mind, what's in your mind, you, you, you action what's in your mind. So that's why it says even, meaning indeed, according to the fruit of his doings. You understand? Meaning what? You get what you deserve. You get what you ask for. You reap what you sow. You cannot plant an apple tree and a guava is going to come out. Impossible. You understand? Watch this. Let's get some examples. Give me the book of Second Chronicles. Okay, Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 7. This is my favorite chapter right here. Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 7. Watch this. Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 7. Second book of Chronicles. Second book of Chronicles. Chapter 1, verse 7. Read. In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. Mm -hmm. He says, Ask. You see that thing? Ask. That's what we read in James 4, verse 3. Ask. He says, He ask and receive not, because he ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lust. So now the Most High God is commanding Solomon to Listen, ask what I must give you, meaning pray for what you want, what I must give to you. Go ahead. In that night did God appear unto Solomon, say it unto him, ask what I shall give thee. Read. And Solomon said unto God, that was showed great mercy unto David my father, and has made me to reign in his stead. Read. No, Lord, let thy promise unto David my father be established. For thou, for thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. That's his thought process now. He says, now he's laying down what's going on. You understand? He's given the most high what's going on. The Lord is aware of what's going on, but the Lord wants you to speak it out. He says, for thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Guess what? You, you brothers upcoming, guess what? The Lord has made you what? Leaders over a people. You understand? Like the dust of the earth in multitude. That's the responsibility. That's your responsibility that you have been given. Give me that in 2 Ezra 5, verse 17. We're coming back here. 2 Ezra chapter 5, verse 17. Second book of Ezra chapter 5, verse 17. Come on. Knowest thou not that Israel is committed unto thee in the land of the captivity? You see that thing? The nation of Israel is committed unto the men in the lands of our captivity. The prophets, the leaders. The 12 tribes, you understand? Like in dust, you see that? A people like the dust of the earth in multitude. That's the responsibility that has been given unto us. That's what King Solomon is acknowledging before the Lord. It says, this is the responsibility that you've given unto me. So now, based on the responsibility that you've given me, this is what I'm gonna ask to handle this responsibility. That's the thought process here. Give me Sarah 33 verse 18, watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 33, verse 18. Hear me, O ye great men of the people, mm -hmm. and hearken with your ears, ye rulers of the congregation. Read that again. Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 33, verse 18. Hear me, O ye great men of the people, mm -hmm. and hearken with your ears, ye rulers of the congregation. You see that ye great men of the people, you men, Hearken with your ears, meaning open your spiritual ears, ye rulers of the congregation, you rulers of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Go back to where he was at now. Second Chronicles 1 verse 9. Second Chronicles 1 verse 9. Come on. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established. For thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. So now that's the responsibility that he's been given. He understands it now. Watch this. This is the ask that he's going to pray for. Next verse. Give me now wisdom and knowledge. No, give me money and fame. Give me now wisdom and knowledge. And you see, give me power and respect. 
Give me now wisdom and knowledge. You see what he was asking? That was, was he, what was in his mind. Give me now wisdom and knowledge. Because he understood the importance of getting these things first. Read it again. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 1, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. Come on. For who can judge this thy people that is so great? Who can judge this thy people that is so great? Go ahead, watch this. And God said unto Sodom, Because this was in thine heart. Stop right there. Because this was in thine heart. How did the Lord know that? Go back to Jeremiah 17 verse 10 now. Jeremiah 17 verse 10. Go back there. The book of Jeremiah. Chapter 17 verses 10. Right. I the Lord search the heart. I, lo I the Lord do what? I the Lord search the heart. I the Lord search the heart. Come on. I try the reins. I try the reins. I try the reins. Go ahead. Even to give every man according to his ways and mm -hmm. according to the fruit of his doings. You see that thing right there? So the most high God, yes, this is what you say. Notice why. Go back to 2 Chronicles 1. Notice to go back to 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 11. I want you to notice what the Lord, the, the, the most high God's response here. You understand? Because some of you might have missed this thing. Watch this. 2 Chronicles 1, verse 11. 2 Book of Chronicles chapter 1, verse 11. And God said to Solomon, because this was in thine heart. No, no, this is what you said with your lips. Because this was in thine heart. You see that thing right there? Because this was in your mind, in your spirit. You understand? Because he could have said something else, but the Lord is said, mm -mm, because this was in your heart, your mind. The Lord was looking at his mind. He wasn't looking at any, he wasn't hearing anything he was saying. No, he was looking at his mind. What is in, what's in his mind exactly? Yes, I hear what you're saying, but let me check that thing out. Let me see where your mind is at. Then I'm going to answer you based on what's in your mind, not what you tell me. Okay? Read that again, verse 11. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 1, verse 11. Read. And God said to Solomon, because this was in thine heart. Come on. And thou hast not asked riches. You have not asked what? Riches. He has not asked riches. He didn't ask for that. That's not the first thing he asked for. He asked wisdom and knowledge because that's the first priority. That's the first things you ask for before the most high God this day. Go ahead. Thou has not asked riches, mm -hmm. wealth, or honor. You see that thing? No. Thou has, thou, thou has not asked riches, wealth, or honor. Go ahead. No, the life. Of thine enemies. Meaning, I want that brother dead. I want that sister dead. Dead, 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 dead. Go ahead. Neither yet has asked long life. He said he didn't ask for long life. Okay, come on. But has asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself. Mm -hmm. But you have asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself. Watch this. Go ahead. And that thou mayest judge my people over Stop whom. That. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. It says, because... He says, but has asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself that thou mayest judge my people. Hold this. Give me Sirach 33 verse 17. We're coming back here. Ecclesiasticus 33 verse 17. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 33 verse 17. Come on. Consider that I labored not for myself only, but for all of them that seek learning. No, but for all them that seek learning. He says, consider that I labored not for myself only. Meaning what? He asked for wisdom for himself, but not just for himself only, but for what? Read that part again. But for all them that what? But for all them that seek learning. But for all them that seek learning. Go back to 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 11. 2 Book of Chronicles chapter 1, verse 11. Read. And God said to Solomon, because this was in thine heart, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet has asked long life, Come on. but has asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself. For thyself. He says, I labor not for myself only. Go ahead. For thyself, that thou mayest judge my people. 
that thou may judge that thou may judge my people i labor not for myself only but for all them that seek learning you see that part right there so the lord understood this thing about king solomon he understood this day you understand read that thou may judge my people over whom i made the king over whom i made the king go ahead next verse wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee you see that thing wisdom and knowledge was granted unto him because the lord looked at his mind he examined his mind to see what is the fruit of his doings what is the fruit of what, what is the objective what is the spirit behind him asking for this thing why is he asking for this because he didn't ask it because he wanted to consume it upon his lust he put down the problem before the lord this is the problem i need wisdom and knowledge and understanding to solve this problem to handle the responsibilities that you put in before me that's what I tell you brothers i need you to study i need you to be sharp okay because a multitude is coming i need you men to be in order and understand this book read that part again verse 12 second book of chronicles chapter 1 verse 12 Come on. wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee mm -hmm. and i'll give thee riches and wealth uh -huh. come on and on you see, Such you see that thing? Hold on, wait, wait, wait. It says, wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor. This is after the fact. Hold this, give me Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Watch this. Because what we are reading here is the same thing that Christ said here. Matthew 6, verse 33. Watch this. The book of Matthew, chapter 6. Verses 33. Read. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. But he, what did he say? Yeah. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's the first thing. The first thing that you must seek for is the kingdom of the most high God. Seek ye first. 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 That's what King Solomon asked for. He asked for that thing. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Go ahead. But seek ye first the kingdom of God uh -huh. and his righteousness. No, and in his riches. And his righteousness. No, and his money. And his righteousness. Fame. And his righteousness. And his righteousness, come on. And all these things shall be added unto you. That's what you saw. Go back to Second Chronicles now. And all these things shall be added unto you. Go back to Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 12. Watch this. Second now, we are, now we get to understand what Christ was saying. We are reading the example right here. Okay, Second Chronicles 1, verse 12. Read what you got. Second book of Chronicles chapter 1, verse 12. Read. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee. Mm -hmm. And I will give thee riches and wealth and honor such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither shall they any after thee have the like. So now, you see, many people, when they read this, they only focus on that last part. Riches, riches, wealth, and honor. And then the next part they look for is, such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither shall they any after thee have the like. I want that part right there. Because what is that called? Go back to James 4, verse 3. James chapter 4, verse 3. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 3. Read. He ask and receive not, because he ask a mess, mm -hmm. that he may consume it upon your lust. You see that thing? That he may consume it upon your lust. That's the riches, the wealth, the honor, better than anybody because you want to floss. You're not doing it because you want to help your nation. You're not asking for that because you want to benefit. You want to benefit your brother. You want to benefit your sister. Mm -mm. You are asking for it so that what? You can floss and be what? And be the only one that is talked about in the room when you walk in. That's, that's, that's what James is saying right here. So when there's fights, when there's confusion, when there's contention among brothers and sisters, is because of what? There's lust that war in our members. That's why. That's the root cause of it. Somebody is worshipping an idol. Or both are worshipping an idol. Or idols. Because it's a last that war in your members. Give me Sirach 20 verse 21. Ecclesiastes chapter 20 
verse 21. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 20, verse 21. Read. Really? There is that, there is that is hindered from sinning through want. And when he taketh rest, he shall not be troubled. He says, there is that is hindered from sinning through want. Meaning there's that brother or that sister is hindered from sinning, from breaking God's commandments because they ask and they receive not. So the Lord, he says, I'm going to hinder you from sinning. That's why I'm not going to give you this thing that you're asking for. That's why I'm not going to bless you with this thing because you might think it's a blessing, but in the long run, it's going to destroy you. So therefore, I'm going to hinder you. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to give it to you because I want. I'm going to prevent you from sinning. You see what I'm saying? If I had to, if you, if you had to give a brother or a sister say, here's one billion, you're not going to see them no more. Yeah, at first it's going to seem like, no, I'm about the truth. You see, I'm about, the, I'm about the father's business. You understand? Next minute, you know, over time they are sitting there, their mind is rushing. Their mind is imagining things. Wait a minute, what the hell is this? What did he say? He said, me, I'm a whore. I have a holy spirit. I'm effeminate. What the hell? Bye. Next thing you see him, he's, he's rocking with a, with, with a Lamborghini. Because what? His spirit was never here. He was, it was not about this. So the Lord said, I'm not going to give you that thing. Because if I give it to you, guess what's going to happen? You will turn into a full-blown demon. He said, I'm not going to give it to you. You understand? I will not give you that thing. Read that again, verse 21. Lost my bearing, sir. Okay, so that 20 verse 21. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 20 verse 21. Read. There is that is hindered from sinning through want. Yeah. And when he taketh rest, he shall not be troubled. He shall not. It says, when he taketh rest, meaning when you sit down to think about that stuff, you understand? It says, he shall not be troubled. You're not going to worry about it no more. So you know what? Mm -hmm. Understand. If I go there, I'm not going to come back in this is true. So you must know yourself. You must know yourself. You say, if I find myself in big amounts of money, I know it's going to corrupt my soul. So Father, just give me this. Give me that in uh, Proverbs chapter 30, verse 8. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 8. We're going to read down. This is what you must pray for. You understand? To stay in the spirit. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Mm -hmm. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Come on. Feed me with food convenient for me. You see that thing? That's what you must pray for. Don't give me riches. Don't give me poverty. Just give me what is convenient for me. Give me what is enough for me. That's it. Give me what is enough for me, my wife, my children, my nation. That's what you must ask for. Give me what's enough for me so I can help my nation. That's it. When you want too much, when, listen, next verse is going to tell you what happens when these things happen and they find the mind is corrupt. The mind has got those lusts that are warring in your members. Guess what's going to happen? This is what's going to happen. Next verse, verse 9. Let I be full uh -huh. and deny thee. You see that thing? Let I be full and deny thee. Once what so see bamba coach. That's the proverb. So see bamba coach. Once you give him food, guess what? He's gonna give you the finger and spit in your face. So that's why it says, Lest I be full and deny thee. You're gonna help to help with that Bible. That's what you're gonna tell us. Okay, come on. And say, who is the Lord? Now you're confused. Who is the Lord? The what? Listen, I got this through my hard work. Isn't that what they say? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Or oh, lest I be poor and steal and you take the name thing? of the Lord. Lest I be poor and steal. Lest I be poor and steal. Go ahead. And take the name of the Lord, my God, in vain. Meaning what? To hell with that Bible. I don't want to keep the commandments no more. Look how suffering. You see, I'm suffering like this. Look at me. Look at the situation that I'm in. So I must believe in that Bible. Why is that in that God? Why, why, why the God that you worship and pray to 
Why can't he get me out of this mess? You think they're going to hear, bruh, the reason why you're in this state is because you broke the commandment. The Lord is judging you. They're not going to want to hear that. That's the point. You understand? That's why it says, give me neither poverty nor riches. Give me food convenient for me. Because you give me too much, I'm going to consume it upon my lust. Go back to James now. Chapter 4, verse 3 again. The book of James. Chapter 4, verse 3. Come on. Ye ask and receive not. Mm -hmm. Because ye ask amiss, ye may consume it upon your lusts. That ye may consume it upon your lusts. Give me the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Watch this. That ye may consume it upon your lust. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Read what you got. The book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Mm -hmm. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor. Let him working, what? But rather let him labor. He says, let him that stole steal no more. Okay, come on. But rather let him what? Labor. Come on. Working with his hands the, the thing which is good. Uh-huh, come on. Working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needed. You see that part right there? That's where the problem comes in. Because the reason why you are asking for it is because you want to consume it upon your lust so that you don't have to give to him that need it. Which is who? Your brother, your sister, your nation. You see that part right there? The reason why you are asking for it is because you don't want to do this right here. Read verse 28 again. Watch this. The book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Mm -hmm. It is him that stole, steal no more. Come on. But rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good mm -hmm. that, he may have, that he may have to give to him that needed. That he may what? That he may have to give to him that needed. That's your nation, your people. Your nation, your people. Watch this. Give me Toby 2 verse 2. Tobit. Give me the book of Tobit chapter 2 verse 2. Watch this. The book of Tobit, chapter 2, verse 2. And when I saw the abundance of meat, I said to my son, go and bring what poor man soever thou shalt find out of our brethren, who is mindful of the Lord, and lo, I tarry for thee. So now what Tobit is saying to Tobias, say, listen, go out there, you understand, we have abundance of meat here. Go and bring what poor man soever thou shalt find out of our brethren, okay, out of your nation, who is mindful of the Lord. That's the key right there. Don't just find any Israelite. No, find an Israelite that keep the commandments. That's why it says, who is mindful of the Lord. Mindful of the who keeps God's commandments. And lo, I tarry for thee. Meaning go and find somebody that keeps the commandments and help him. So we can share what we have because we have in abundance. That's what he's saying. Here's an example. Give me the book of Sirach 12, verse 1. You're going to start there. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. Read what you got. The book of Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1. When thou wouldst do good, know to whom thou doest it. Read. So shall thou be thanked for thy benefits. So shall thou be thanked for thy benefits. Meaning if you are to do good, know to whom you are doing your good to. You understand? So you may be thanked for your benefits. Go ahead. Do good to the godly man. That's what Tobit said to Tobias. Listen, go out there, look for a, a, a poor man that is of our brethren who is mindful of the Lord. Meaning what? He is a godly man. He keeps the commandments. Go ahead. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 2. Do good to the God, the man, and thou shalt find a recompense. And if not from him, yet from the Most High. 
You see what he's saying right there? Do good to the godly man, and thou shalt find a recompense. Meaning what? You're going to get a benefit from that. And if not from him, the one that you've done good to, you're going to get it from the most high God. That's what he's saying right there. That's what Tobit was saying. Go back to Tobit 2 verse 2. Tobit, I just want to clarify that because we understand. Don't just find a bum on the street that be giving the money. Okay? Tobit 2 verse 2. Watch this. The book of Tobit 2 verse 2. And when I saw abundance of meat, I said to my son, go and bring what poor man, what, what poor man soever thou shalt find out of our brethren, who mm -hmm. is mindful of the Lord, and lo, I tarry but for thee. You see that thing? I tarry for thee. So that's what Tobit was saying. Because he, the, the abundance that he had, he, what did he do with it? He did good to his neighbor. He did good to him that needed it. That's why, right? That's what we just read. Where? Go back to Ephesians 4, 28 now. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Go back there. The book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. And hey. him that sold, steal no more. But rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needed. That you see that thing? That he may have to give to him that needed. That's what Toby did. Tobit applied that commandment. He applied the command because the abundance that he had, he was not consuming it upon his lusts. He wasn't covetous. So that's why he said, look, go out there and look for somebody, a brother that keeps the commandments that we can give this to because we have in abundance. Tobit was applying the royal law. Love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, go back to James now. James chapter 4, verse 3. The book of James chapter 4, verse 3. Read. Come on. He ask and receive not. Because he ask amiss, that he may consume it upon your lusts. That you may consume it upon your lusts. Next verse. Ye adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. So now James is saying he adulterers and adulteresses. Remember, James is dealing with what? He says, read verse 1 again, James 4 verse 1, so we don't lose the thought. The book of James chapter 4 verse 1. Mm -hmm. From whence come wars and fighting among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members? Read. Ye lust and have not. He killed and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet ye, yet ye have not because ye ask not. Now jump down to verse 4. Remember, verse 4 is saying, ye adulterers and adulteresses, men and women that are adulterers and adulteresses, whores and whoremongers. That's what he's saying right here. So verse 1 is saying, the reason why you are fighting that you are warring amongst yourselves because of the last that war in your members. Now he's calling them what? The people that he's explaining that are fighting in verse 1, he's explaining them in verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses. Those are the people that are warring and fighting one with another. You understand? Read that again, verse 4 now. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, Know ye not that the friendship of the world is an, en is an enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Okay, now, so, so now we're going to deal with the adulterers and adulteresses. Because he's calling them adulterers and adulteresses. Give me the book of Jeremiah 3 verse 8. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 8. Why is he calling them adulterers and adulteresses? Watch this. Jeremiah 3, verse 8. We're going to read 8 and 9. Come on. The book of Jeremiah 3, verse 8. And I saw mm -hmm. when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away. So now this and backsliding Israel is talking about Northern Kingdom. Backsliding Israel committed <laughs> adultery and I put her away because they went into captivity under the Assyrians. Come on. 
whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and Come given on. her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. So now what is happening here is that Northern Kingdom went into what? They committed adultery. What was their sin? Idolatry. Okay. Now Judah also followed the same footsteps of Israel, of Northern Kingdom. They played the harlot also. That's why Nebuchadnezzar came to take us into captivity. Next verse. And it came to pass through the likeness of a whoredom mm -hmm. that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. You see that thing? That's the idolatry. The adultery is the idolatry. So that whoredom and the adultery that Judah and Israel played is idolatry. You understand? That's why he's calling us adulterers and adulteresses. Because what was the fornication? Idolatry. Spiritual fornication. That is what was going on here. So now go back to James, okay? Now jump down to verse 14. Read verse 14. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, uh -huh. for I am married unto you. Read. And I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. You see that thing? He says, I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. So what was the backsliding? Worshipping of idols. That's the, that's the fornication and the whoredom, the adultery that we was in the midst of. Go back to James now, chapter 4, verse 4 again. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 4. You adulterers and adulteresses. Stop right there. You know, you adulterers, you adulterers and adulteresses. Go back to Colossians 3, verse 5. Because remember, he's explaining where the wars and the fightings come about. Where, where the contentions, the confusions, and the fighting, the hatred, the envy comes from in Israel among brothers and sisters. Okay, Colossians 3, verse 5. Read that. The book of Colossians 3, verse 5. Read. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And covetousness, which is idolatry. Covetousness, which is idolatry. So what is the main sin that is affecting everything else in the house? What is the main sin that is causing arguments all the time? Argumentative argumentative behavior in the house between men and women. You understand? Brother and brother in the congregation, sister and sister in the congregation. What is causing all of this thing? What is the root cause of this? Give me Exodus 20 verse 17. This is the root cause of all of this confusion. The wars and the fightings that come about, this is the root cause. Exodus 20, verse 17. Watch this. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 17. Read. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So covetousness, covetousness, which is idolatry. So because the mind has got a lot of idols, you see that thing? Because you have got a covetous spirit, that covetous spirit calls you to do what? To worship idols. Because before you can get it, you must worship it. You must learn everything and everything about it. Your behavior will be about that thing. Your conduct, your speech will be about that thing. That's when you begin to worship it. Once you worship it, you're going to do anything and everything to make sure that you bow down to that thing. You're going to get it. That's the key. That's the point right here. Read that again, verse 17. The book of Exodus 20, verse 17. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So now, because of that covetous spirit is going to what? Now it's going to cause you to break another law, which is what? Idolatry. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Jump up to verse 3 now. This is the law. This is the next law that you're going to, your covetous spirit, your lustful spirit is going to cause you to break. Now you're going to go outside of God's laws to what? To worship that thing. No longer do you worship the one true God. Now you worship those Nike shoes, 
Now you worship that iPhone. Now you worship that woman. You worship that brother. You worship that car. You understand? Now you're gonna do anything and everything to get to that vehicle, to get to that woman, to get to the to, to get to to get to that coach. You do whatever the hell you want until you get it. Read verse three now. Watch this. The book of Exodus, twenty verse three. Thou shalt have no other cause before me. Read that again. The book of Exodus, of twenty verse three. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's the law. But now, because there's fightings and wars among the brothers and sisters, what's in the midst? Covetousness. What is covetousness? Go back to Colossians 3 verse 5 so we understand what is covetousness. The book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 5. Mortify them for your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry. And covetousness, which is idolatry. All of these things that the apostle Paul is mentioning here, they are contrary to God's laws. You understand? And the law that has been broken now, that those covet, that, that covetous spirit, that lustful spirit, because the reason why you are praying for these things is so you can consume them upon your lust. Those lusts that were in your members, those are your idols that you worship. Exodus 20 verse 3 now. Again, the book of Exodus, chapter verse three: Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Read. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. So now, what we're reading here, verse three, is telling thou shalt have no other gods. Right. Once you have those, once you have you have that idol in your mind, in your spirit. Guess what's the next thing that you do to that idol? Verse 4 again. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. So now what you want to notice about this thing, remember, this is spiritual. This is all spiritual. So guess what? You worship the woman. Are you literally going to take that woman in grave? and create a graven image. No, that graven image, that woman is in your mind. She's engraved in your head. That's the point. That booty is engraved in your head. You can't get it out. Okay? That car is engraved in your spirit. That money is engraved in your spirit. Guess what? You worshiping it, you're going to do things that are going to show really you worship that thing. You understand? Now, let's say work. You want more money. Guess what you're going to do? You're going to break the Sabbath to work extra to get paid. So now you're worshiping it now. That money, that idol called money now is engraved in your head. Now the decisions you make show that you worship it now. You see that thing? Because that worship goes into what? You go against the laws of God. Okay, come on. Verse 5. This is the key. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. You see that thing? Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. Go ahead. Nor serve them. Nor serve them. Come on. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Mm -hmm. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So now what you want to notice here says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. So bowing down and serving to the saving these things is all spiritual. Because, for instance, let's say you don't have an image of Caesar Bourget in your house, right? But you break the Sabbath. Are you bowing down to white Jesus? Yes, you are bound down to white Jesus. Are you bowing down to the rock called Allah? Yes, you are bound down to a rock called Allah. Okay? You are worshiping and serving those idols because. That's not how you serve and worship the Lord. You serve and worship the Lord by keeping his commandments. That's how that, that's, that's how that goes. So the minute you go outside of God's commandments, but you say, no, I'm still worshiping the Lord. No, you're not worshiping the Most High. That's why now there's fightings in the, in the marriages. There's fighting amongst the brethren, fightings among the sisters. sisters. Sisters, actually, they struggle to get along. Sisters, they struggle to get along. You understand? I'm being, I'll be watching. I'm watching, sisters. Don't get it twisted. I'm watching. 
Okay, watch this. That's a topic for another day. Go back to where was that now? James chapter 4. James 4. Verse 4 again. The book of James chapter 4. Verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses. Come on. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity to God? The friendship, <laughs> the, the friendship of the world is enmity with God. What does the word enmity mean? Enmity means foolishness. That's what enmity means, hatred. Enmity means hatred. So read that part again. It says that the friendship of the world is what? That the friendship of the world is enmity with God. The friendship of the world is hatred with God. Because how do you love the Father? Give me that in First John 5 and 3. The friendship of the world is enmity with God. First John 5 and 3. This is how you love the Father. Okay? First book of John, chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. You see that thing? When you love the Most High, you will keep his commandments. But when you hate the Lord, you're going to be friends, you're going to fellowship with the customs and philosophies and, and, and what? And traditions of the world. First John 2, verse 16. Read that. That's my parents, no? First John chapter 2, verse 16. Read that. First John chapter 2. Verse 16. Come on. First book of John chapter 2, verse 16. For all that is in the world, the last of the flesh. The what? The last of the eyes. The last of the flesh. The last of the flesh. So what we read in James 4, remember he said, ye lust and desire to have. Ye ask and ye receive not because of what? The last you ask amiss. You're not asking the right, the, you're, not, you're not praying. Your prayers, are, your prayers are inappropriate. You are praying inappropriate prayers. Your lips are saying one thing, but your mind is saying something different. That means you come before the Lord with a double heart. The Lord is not going to answer you. You understand? Because you're not sincere before the Most High. So that says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, lust that war in your members. You understand? Come on. First book of John, chapter 2, verse 16. Three. For all that is in the world, mm -hmm. the lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh. That's what we just read. Come on. And the lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes. You understand? Here you are, you are married, but you are busy looking at other women. You understand? You are busy looking at other women's chests. You are busy looking at other women's behinds. You're looking at other women's legs on the internet, on the interweb, wherever. Here you are, you are married. You understand? But sister still moving with a Holy spirit. The lust of the eyes. You are still looking at other men's arms. Mm, he's dark and handsome. But here you are, you've got a brother that the Lord has given unto you, but your mind is, you are still looking. You understand? Because you don't understand the honor of Mary. That's why you're going to have trouble in the flesh. Your flesh is going to trouble you. Why? Because why? You have not mortified the members in your members. You have not done that. You haven't done that. So like you brothers, you want to get married, you burning in your lust is not reason to get married. You must still prove that, sister. Sisters, you, you, you burning in your lust is not a reason to get married. You must prove the brother before you can marry the brother. You understand? It doesn't mean you must skip that stage. You must still prove the brother or the sister. You understand? Read it again, verse 16. The lust of the eyes. No, no, no. Read it again, verse 16. Come on. First book of John chapter 2, verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life and the it's pride not... of life. The pride of life meaning what? You are proud of the life that you are living that is going contrary to God's laws. Because what is pride? Give me that in Sirach 10 verse 12 real quick. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 12. Let's see what is pride according to the Most High. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verses 12. The beginning of pride is when one departed from God mm -hmm. and his heart is turned away from his maker. 
your mind is turned away from your maker, meaning what? You're no longer in one, you're no longer one with the Lord. You have departed from the most high God. You are spiritually dead. You are saving Satan. Go ahead. For the for pride is the beginning of sin. Pride is the and beginning of sin. Pride. What is pride? You depart from the most high. When you depart from the most high, you are not serving the one true God. Now you are in the midst of sin. The devil owns you. Go ahead. For pride is the beginning of sin. Come on. And he that let it shall pour out abomination. You see that thing? The one that has pride will pour out abominations out of his mind because now his mind is not disciplined with God's laws. Read. And therefore the Lord brought upon them strange calamities. You see that thing? And the, Lord, the Lord is going to bring upon you strange calamity. Strange things are going to happen unto you. Go ahead. And strange calamities and overthrew them utterly. The Lord will overthrow you. Go ahead. Go back to James now. James. No, no. Go back to 1 John 2 verse 16. 1 John 2 16. Let's finish that first, up. First book of John chapter 2 verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. You see that thing? It's not of the Father, but it's of the world. So go back to James 4 verse 4 again. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? So now, we just explained, we just explained the friendship of the world. The friendship of the world is what we read in 1 John 2, 16. That's the friendship of the world, because we know, what is that friendship? You mean you partake with the things that are in the world, which is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. None of which is of the Father, but is of the world. And this world belongs to who? The devil right now. Okay, come on, read on. Ye adulterers and adulteresses. Come on. Know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. So whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is, is the enemy of God. So now, to be a friend of the world is what we read in 1 John 2, 16. Because you are fellowshipping with the what? With the things of the world. You are one with them. You partake. You understand? You partake in those things that they do in the world because the things that are done in the world, they are not about the father's business. It's about to, it's a what? It's about hatred of the father. Anything that is done in the world that is not according to this Bible is an example of the hatred that they have towards this Bible. The hatred they have towards the Mosai. The hatred they have towards his son, the Christ, and, the, and his people too, which is the 12 tribes. So when you see our people out there sinning, that's the spirit they are moving in. They see the other nations, obviously they hate what is written in this book. You understand? So our job is to do what? Our job is to sit down and examine ourselves. You understand? When you're constantly fighting with your, with your wife, you're constantly fighting with your husband, you're constantly fighting with your brother or your sister is because you're not sitting down to examine yourself. You know there's a lust that war in your members, but you don't want to what? You don't want to check yourself before you wreck yourself. You don't want to do that. So now instead of examining yourself, you examine your wife. No, no. Examine yourself. Because you, mm, I'm jumping ahead. Watch this. Give me, read on, read on, read verse five now. James 4 verse 5. The book of James chapter 4 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lasteth to envy. He says the spirit that dwell within us lasteth to envy. What is the spirit that, that dwell within us that lasts to envy? Remember envy is what? Envy is contrary to God's commandments. Envy is hatred. So that spirit of envy is hatred. So the spirit that lasts in, within us lasts to envy. You understand? Envy is what? Covetousness. Lust. Idolatry. That spirit of envy right there, watch this. Give me the book of Joshua, chapter 7, verse 21. I'm going to show you the spirit that lasted to envy. Joshua 7, 21. The book of Joshua, chapter 7, verse 21. <clears throat> Come on. 
The book of Joshua chapter seven, verses 21. When I saw among the spoils of a goodly Babylonish garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wage of gold and a 50 shekels weight, then I coveted them and took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. So now we went over this yesterday. So now to catch the sisters up, this is a brother called Achan. You understand? Went to war. When, when he got to war, he started, he stole the stuff that belonged to the people to, we went to war against, the Babylonians. So he too, he saw a goodly Babylonish garment, 200 shekels of silver and 50 shekels of gold. So he took that. You understand? And he, because what? Because of what? He had the spirit of covetousness. But he also had the spirit of envy because he, and he lasted after a Babylonian garment. They don't wear fringes, we do. He was wearing fringes, he lasted after a garment of another nation, you understand, because the garment that he was wearing was not good enough for him. He rather take this one off that he's wearing, that is fringes, and put a Babylonish garment on. Envy of the oppressor, envy of the enemy, you understand? So the spirit that was working through a in Achan was the spirit that lasted to envy, which caused him to what? To sin. Because what was the sin? Covetousness idolatry, envy, you understand, lying and deceit. So now he's got all those demons working in his spirit. You see the thing? Watch this. Give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 23. Okay, Wisdom of Solomon 6, verse 23. Watch this. Peter. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 23. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 6, verses 23. Read. Neither will I go with consuming envy. You see that thing? Neither will I go with consuming envy. Because of his envious spirit of envy of what? Envy of the other nations and hatred of the things that belong to us that was ordained of God. Guess what happened to him and his wife and his family and everything that he had? was consumed, was put to death because of that thing. Because of that envious, lustful, and covetous spirit. You understand? Read that again. The Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verses 23. Neither will I go with consuming envy. Read. For such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom. You see what he's saying? Such a man will have no fellowship with wisdom, will have no friendship with the Lord, because the Lord is the one that will give you wisdom as a gift. But as long as you have friendship or fellowship with the world, you, have no, you will not going to have any fellowship with the Most High God. Because guess what? That spirit that is working you lasted to envy. That envy will consume you, which is what happened to Achan. Okay, give me Galatians 5 verse 16. He says, the spirit that is within us lasted to envy. Because there's always a what? There's a war within us. Watch this. Galatians 5 verse 16. The book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You see that thing? It says, walk in the spirit, meaning keep the commandment. Be mindful always of God's laws, like Tobit was saying. You understand? Ye shall not fulfill, meaning you're not going to what? You're not going to fold to that sin. You're not going to fulfill the lust of that flesh. You understand? Because of what? Because you understand there's a war within you. You understand the last that war in your members. What are those members? We read about them in Colossians 3. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, which is idolatry. Those are the members that we are commanded to mortify. So the war that happens within us is what the Apostle Paul is explaining here. Verse 16 again. Galatians 5 verse 16, come on. The book Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Come on. For the lust, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit. The flesh, the flesh, the flesh lusts after against the spirit. You understand? So those, those fleshly lusts, 
those fleshly lusts that is in our spirit, that they are the ones that are fighting with the spirit of the Most High God, the commandments. You understand? So now, hmm, keep reading, keep reading, keep reading. Galatians okay, read, 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 read verse 17 again. Come on. The book Galatians chapter 5 verse 17. For the flesh lasteth against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. Mm -hmm. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that you would. So now the flesh fights against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. What is that called? That's a war. That's a spiritual war that is going on within you. You understand? That's the spiritual war that is going on within you. Watch this. Jump down to verse 19 because now we need to understand the works of the flesh because that's the reason why men and women be fighting and arguing. You understand? You have, you're holding grudge about this brother, about that sister, so on and so forth. This is what, because you are, the, the works of the flesh is overtaking you. You understand? That's why these wars and fightings come about. Verse 19, read that. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, read? idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, mm -hmm. come on, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revilings, revelings, and such like revelings, revelings that goes into partings. Reveling goes into partings. Go ahead. Drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You see what we are reading? So verse 19 down to verse what? To verse 21, it explains to you the works of the flesh. And all these members that we just read here, these are the, these are the members that cause men and women to fight. This is the reason why men and women, they be having arguments and fights, is because of these things that they are not purged out of their spirit. They are not deadened. They, did, they are not mortifying these members. Because the only way, because this, this is a revealing class. Think about it. You, you be praying, you, you fast, you, do, you, you keep the commandments and all of that. But for some reason, the Lord is not answering your prayers. What's the problem? The problem is that you have lost that war in your members. That's why the Lord is not giving you the things that you are asking for. Why? Because you don't want to what? You don't want to sit down and examine these things. Because the purpose of examination is to do what? Is to recognize the things that exist in your spirit that you can what? That you can get rid of them. That's where the grace comes in. Because by right, the Lord's supposed to put us to death. But he's giving us a chance to get it together, to fix these issues. But men and women don't want to fix the issues they are holding on because they're what? They're stubborn. You'll be, you'll be hearing brothers and sisters, they say, me, me, I'm stubborn, yeah. Me, I don't want to hear nothing. Me, Listen, the stubbornness you must have is a stubbornness for this Bible. You must be stubborn to keep what is written. You must be stubborn to humble down what is written in this book. But I want to show you the worst type of stubbornness is the one that a brother or sister will agree to stuff. They say, yes, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, but they don't do it. That's the worst kind. Those ones are more dangerous. Okay, those ones are more dangerous. Those ones are those ones. Those ones. The chances of them, the chances of them, uh, betraying you, being traitors, they are very high, because they will agree, but inwardly they are full of deceit. You see that thing? So the, it's easy for them to do what? To become a traitor, to become a Judas. So spirits like that, you have to watch very closely. Don't, you can't sleep on spirits like that because anytime they can drop you like a hot potato. Yep. Or they can be a plant. They can be a spy. Yeah, it's in the Bible. You understand? Judas was one of them. Okay, watch this. Go back to, go back to James now. Go back to James chapter 4. James chapter 4. 
James 4 and verse, James 4 verse 6 now. James chapter 4 verse 6. The book of James chapter 4 verse 6. Read. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. You see that thing right there? It says, but he giveth more grace. The Lord is giving us grace. You understand? What is the grace? Give me that in uh, Titus 2 verse 11. <laughs> Titus chapter 2 verse 11. This is, the Lord is giving us the grace period to get it together. He's giving us a chance to fix our issues, to, to deaden or to mortify these members that are upon the earth. Okay? Titus 2 verse 11. The book of Titus chapter 2 verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. He's going to tell you who those men are if you read verse 14. Read on, verse 12. Teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So the grace period, the grace that the Lord gave unto us was to, was to teach us to deny ungodliness. That's why the Lord gave us the spirit of what? Grace. So we can deny ungodliness. Meaning what? How do you deny that ungodliness? You sit down, you examine yourself, you purge the members that are what? You purge the lust that war in your members. That's what this grace is designed for, to teach you to get it together, to fix your issues. Instead of what? Instead of holding on to the fights, you understand? Instead of fighting amongst, amongst one another, instead of envying each other, instead of hating one another, instead of doing that, just, just examine and repent. That's all you got to do because the Lord has given us a chance to do so. You understand? Go back to where was that, James? Okay, James chapter four. The book of James, chapter four, verse six. Verse six, come on. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. So now the Lord has given us the grace. What is the grace to teach us to deny ungodliness? He's giving us a chance to what? To repent. Okay, wherefore he said, God resisted the proud. Now we know what who the proud are. The proud is though the proud is the men and women that hear the word of God and still do the same things that they was doing before they heard it. The proud is those that, that they hear the counsel, but they still do the same garbage that they was doing before the counsel came out. Those are the proud because they are resisting God's commandments. So the Lord is saying, God resisted the proud. The Lord will resist you. That's the point. The meaning what? Reject you, but giveth grace unto the humble. The humble, it doesn't mean you talk like a mouse. No. The humble means you humble down to what the Bible is saying. That's what, that's what it means to be humble. Okay, watch this. Give me Sarah chapter 18, verse 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 18, verse 14. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 18, verse 14. Read. He hath mercy on them that receiveth the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 18, verse 14. He had mercy on them that received discipline mm -hmm. and that diligently seek after his judgment. So now he said, the Lord says, going back to that grace, the mercy. You understand? Going back to the grace, he says, he had mercy on them that received discipline. What is the discipline? God's commandments. Because they will discipline you if you read Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 5. And that diligently seek after his judgments. Watch this. You must diligently seek after God's judgment. Why? Watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. That diligently seek after his judgments. Okay? Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. As an example. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verses 48. Therefore, Shall thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee Ray. in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And mm -hmm. he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck 
until he had destroyed me. So that's the judgment. So if you diligently seek after God's judgments, you will understand why these judgments came upon us. Guess what you begin to do? You begin to repent. When you do so, the Lord have, has mercy upon you. That's the point. You see that thing? So that's what this is going into. Give me that in Psalms 147 verse 11 now. Psalms 147 verse 11. Watch this. Psalms 147 verse 11. The book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 11. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope, in those that hope in his mercy. So the Lord will take pleasure in them that fear him. Those that fear the Lord do what? Give me that in Sirach 2, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2, verse 14. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2. No, verse two. 15. Sirach 2, 15. The book of Ecclesiastes 2 verse 15. Mm -hmm. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. Come on. And they that love him will keep his ways. You see what he's saying right there? They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. So the most high God will have mercy upon you when you do what? When you keep his command, when you obey his word, when you humble yourself down to his word, then the Lord will have mercy upon you. The Lord will not resist you because you are not moving in the spirit of pride. You see that thing? Go back to Psalms 147, verse 11 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 11. Read. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, mm -hmm. in, those, in those that hope in his mercy. Meaning those that hope in the Lord's mercy. Because guess what? You, 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 you praying for the Lord's mercy when what? You know that um, as you walk in this truth, guess what's going to happen? You're going to what? You're going to make mistakes. You must learn from those mistakes. Willful sins, you must what? You must repent and understand that the most High God will what will bring forth judgment. So when the Lord does bring that judgment, you want the Lord to what? To deal with you according to his mercy. Give me that in um, Ecclesiasticus 35. Okay, Sirach 35 is 20. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 35, verse 20. Read. Mercy is, mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction, as clouds of rain in the time of drought. So now, mercy is seasonable. Meaning in the season of your trial, you must what? You must ask the Lord for mercy when he brings forth judgment. When he brings forth that correction, you must ask the Lord to deal with you according to his mercy. That's why it says mercy is seasonable because each season, the trials will come. The devil will come to you in every season. and will come to pay you a visit. You must be ready when he returns. Okay? In the time of affliction, you must ask for mercy. The Lord must deal with you according to his mercy in that time of your trial. You understand? Okay. Watch this. Um, give, me, give me the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8, verse 11. Ecclesiastes. Chapter 8, verse 11. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8. So the mercy, the mercy that we are talking about here, the mercy is the grace period that the Lord has given unto each and every Israelite before he returns. So by the time the Lord returns, you have gotten yourself right. Meaning what? You're not wasting the time allotted to you. You're not wasting the mercy that the Lord has given. Meaning don't waste it. Don't waste it because this is a great opportunity. Don't waste the opportunity. Seize the opportunity. You understand? You know better, you ought to do better. Watch this. Ecclesiastes 8 verse 11. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 11. But sentence, the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. You see that thing? So he says, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. It's not immediate, like it was under Moses. He says, because of that, therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. So the Lord is what? What is this? What is King Solomon explaining here? Grace. This is grace right here. 
if that if the if the if the if the sentence is not executed speedily what is that called grace the lord is giving you a chance to do what to get it together before he kills you you understand or so that he doesn't put you to death that the lord does not bring condemnation on you he's giving you a chance to walk in the spirit like it says in romans 8 verse 1 watch this give me you go back to James. Let's go back. Let's go back to James. Okay. Let's go back to James. Read James chapter 4, verse 6. One more again. James. That's my parents, sir. Uh, James 4, verse 6. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 6. Mm -hmm. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith. God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. The Lord will give grace unto the humble. Those men and women that humble themselves to this Bible, the Lord will extend the mercy unto you. The Lord will extend grace unto you. Give me that in James 4 verse 10. Jump down to verse 10. The book of James chapter 4 verse 10. Mm -hmm. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. You see that thing? Humble yourself, meaning what? Keep God's commandments. That's how you humble yourself. You keep God's commandments as the Lord shall lift you up. As a nation, we keep God's commandments, the Lord will lift us up. But every brother and sister, every man and woman in here, you have to humble yourself so that the Lord can lift you up from the sins that you are struggling with. Watch this. Give me the book of Sirach chapter 7, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 17. The book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 7, verse 17. Uh -huh. Humble thy soul greatly, for the vengeance of the ungodly is fire and worms. You see what he's saying right there? Humble thy soul greatly, for the vengeance of the ungodly is fire and worms, meaning death and destruction. So that's why it says, humble thy soul greatly, meaning what? Humble down to what this Bible is saying. Don't have it, but, or maybe. No. The Bible is saying, we're going to do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Bible says what? Okay. We're moving. No if, but, or maybe about it. Mm -mm. The Bible says what? I'm going to do that thing. I don't want to get myself into trouble. I don't want to bring death unto myself. I don't want to bring consumption to myself. Let me fix this thing. I'm not going to tarry. I'm not going to waste time. That's the thought. That's the mindset we all have to have. Both men and women and the children and the young daughters of Zion too. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 15 verse 33. <coughs> Excuse me. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 33. Read that. The book of Proverbs chapter 15 verse 33. Read. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. The fear of and the Lord honor hold is on. humility. Wait, 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 hold on. Come on. I need you to stay with me. Read that again, verse 33. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. So now, the fear, you see that part right there? The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. So if you fear the most high God, you are going to be instructed of his wisdom. That's how you show, you prove that you fear the most high. You are going to allow yourself to be instructed of his wisdom. Watch this. Give me that in Romans chapter 2. Okay. Romans 2, verse 20. I believe that's what I want. Romans 2, verse 20. No, no. Verse 18, Romans 2, verse 18. Read that. The book of Romans, Romans 2, 18. verse 18. Come on. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. And knows it will. And approves the things that are more excellent. Being instructed out of the law. Being instructed out of the law. Being instructed out of God's wisdom. So guess what? If you fear the Lord, you're going to what? You're going to love being instructed out of God's laws. Not, of, not, of, not of, out of a man's mind. No, out of God's commandments. 
being instructed out of the law. Go back to Proverbs 15, verse 33, once again. The book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs. Proverbs 15, verse 33, come on. The book of Proverbs chapter 15, verse 33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom and before honor is humility. You see what it says right there? So the first thing is the fear. And when you fear the Lord, how are you going to prove you fear the Lord? You're going to be instructed out. You're going to love. You're going to want and love being instructed out of God's laws. Then it says, and before honor, before you can receive honor, you must humble yourself to what? what? You must humble yourself to the instruction of God's wisdom, which is God's commandments. You're not going to get any honor if you don't humble down to what this Bible is saying. That's not happening. That's not going to happen. Okay, watch this. Go back to James now. James 4, verse 7. This is the next part. This is the next thing that you must do now. The Bible says you must humble yourself. Once you, when you humble yourself, that means what the Bible says do, you're going to do it. Moreover, this was the next thing you're going to do. James 4, verse 7. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 7. Read. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Read that again, verse 7. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So now this is the next stipulation. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. How do you, what, is, what does it mean to submit yourself to the Most High? It says, submit yourself therefore to God. Because, watch this, give me, you know what? Read seven and eight together. The book of James chapter four verse seven. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Mm -hmm. Draw nigh to God. And he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. You see what James is saying right there? That's some heavy stuff right here. He says, submit yourself. Then he says, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Watch this. Let's deal with the submission part. Give me that in Second Chronicles. Give me Second Chronicles chapter 15. Second Chronicles chapter 15. Let's start at verse 1. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 1. Second book of Chronicles chapter 15, verse 1. Read. And the Spirit of God came unto Azariah, the son of Obed. Read. And the Spirit of God came, out, came upon Azariah, the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you, while ye be with him. And if ye seek him, he will be found of you. But if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. So now, you see what the Lord is saying right here? It says, the Lord is with you. The Most High God is with you when you submit yourself to him. While ye be with him, if you are with him, you understand? If you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you also. So when you submit yourself to the Most High God, guess what you are doing? You are submitting yourself to the role that God ordained for you. If you are a man, you are a brother, you must submit yourself to the role that God ordained for you. And you must what? You must act that role out the way that the Lord has given the guidelines out. The sisters too, you submit yourself to the Most High, you must submit yourself to the role that God gave you. You understand? That's how you are going to be able to what? Give me Sarah 25 and 1. When, you, when men and women submit themselves to the roles that God ordained for them, this is what happens in the house. This is what happens between brother and brother, sister and sister. Watch this. Sarah 25 verse 1. 
Read the that. book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verse 1. Mm-hmm. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and men. Come on. The unity of brethren. The what? Unity of brethren. That's the same thing we read earlier on in in Ephesians 4, verse 3. Come on. The love of neighbors. The love of neighbors. Okay, come on. A man and a wife that agree together. A man and a wife that agree together. When a man submits himself to the role that God gave him, and the woman submits herself to the role that God gave her, guess what's going to happen? You're going to agree as one. You're going to agree together. You're going to have unity. You understand? There will be God's divine order in that house. There'll be God's divine order in that man's spirit. There'll be God's divine order in that woman's spirit. But as long as none of you want to submit yourself, humble yourself down to the role that God gave you, there will be, go back to James 4 verse 1 so we don't lose the thought. This is what will continue to happen over and over and over again. James 4 verse 1. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 1. Right. From when come wars and fightings among you? Mm-hmm. Come they not hence even of your last that war in your members? You see that thing? So these wars and fightings that come about, that come about between men and women is because of what? Because of men and women do not want to submit themselves to the roles that God ordained for them. That's the problem. That's why you see men and women fighting one with another. Brother and brother fighting one with another because you are not what? You're not submit, you have not submitted yourself to the righteousness of God. Watch this. Give me that in Romans 10. Okay? You have not submitted yourself to the righteousness of the Most High God. God's divine order that you ordain for both men and women. Romans chapter 10 and verse, let's start at verse, let me see. Verse 3. Romans 10 verse 3. Read what you got. The book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 3. Come on. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. Stop right there. So the reason why there's wars and fightings between men and women, the brothers, the, the sisters in the congregation, is because of what? They are ignorant of God's righteousness. Give me that in Deuteronomy 6.25 real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. Let's understand what that means. Okay? They are ignorant of God's righteousness. What is God's righteousness? Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 25. Read. And shall be our righteousness. Come on. If we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he had commanded us. So now this is righteous. This is what righteousness is. Keeping of God's commandments in the faith of his son. Go back to where he was at now. Romans 10, verse 3. The book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 3. Read. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. They be ignorant. They being ignorant of God's righteousness, meaning they ignore God's laws. God's laws pertaining to what? To pertaining to the roles or the respective roles that the Lord had ordained for them. You understand? They are ignorant of that. That's why there's wars and fightings among them. Because if you're ignorant of God's righteousness, what's running the show? Your lust, that war in your members. That's why you fight one with another. Go ahead. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness. You see that part right there? They've gone to establish their own Meaning what? They are moving in the imagination of their evil mind now. They are, coming with, uh, they are coming up with their own way of doing things. How to be a husband, how to be a wife, how to be a mother. That's their own definition. The definitions that they get from the world. And the definition of what marriage is according to what's happening in the world has nothing to do with this Bible. The definition of how to be a man, how to be a woman, how to be a sister, how to be a brother, how to love your neighbor. It's not in the world. It's in this Bible. So when you go out, you go, you go out of your way to ignore God's laws, to establish your own wicked thoughts and ideas. Guess what? 
the most that God will not lift you up because you are moving in the spirit of pride. The Lord will resist you. Okay, come on. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. You see that thing? You're supposed to submit yourself to the righteousness of God. That's the key. That's the submission. He says, submit yourself. You must submit yourself to the righteousness of God. Let's give you some examples. Give me 1 Peter 3. Okay, 1 Peter chapter 3. Let's read verse 7. 1 Peter 3 verse 7. Watch this. First book of Peter chapter 3 verse 7. Come on. Likewise, ye husbands, deal with them according to knowledge. Deal with your mm -hmm. wives. The with them is your wives. Is deal with your wives according to knowledge. What is the knowledge? God's commandments. Deal with your wives according to the knowledge of God, the laws of God. Come on. Deal with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. You see that and part? You must give honor to your wife as unto the weaker vessel. When it says give honor to your wife, it doesn't mean submit yourself to your wife. No, you don't mean that. You must deal with your wife according to knowledge. What is the knowledge? You read about, we're going to read about that thing. Keep reading. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Read. And as being heirs together of the grace of life. Mm -hmm. That your prayers be not hindered. That your what? That your prayers be not hindered. You see that part right there? That's the key right there. That's the key to the whole verse. That your prayers be not hindered. That your prayers be not hindered. You ever notice, brother and sister, you are proving your merit, okay, or a brother in the truth, a sister in the truth. Your prayers are being hindered. You understand? Your prayers is in the, is, if, if you are not married, that's fine. Your prayers are being hindered. What's the problem? Because of the lust that dwell in your members. Because the prayers that you are making to the Lord, they are amiss. They are inappropriate. They have nothing to do with the gathering of the 12 tribes. They have nothing to do with, you are not nation-minded. You are double-minded. You understand? So your prayers will be hindered. Next part of the, of the situation is, men and women, you are married. Okay? Your prayers are hindered. Why? The reason why they are hindered is because one of you or both of you, you have an idol or idols in your mind that you are worshipping. And none of you want to relinquish those idols and repent. That's why your prayers are hindered as a couple. That's why your prayers are hindered as a marriage, as, as a household. You understand? Your prayers are not going to be answered because one of you or both of you, you are, you are what? You are worshipping idols and you don't want to repent. You don't want to mortify those members. That's why there's always arguments. An argument just comes out of nowhere. It's because of what? The last that war in your members. And you don't want to sit down and examine. That's why here, you see, this is the key to a couple's success here. A married couple's keys to success is this what we are reading here. The, the, the woman must submit herself to the man. You understand? And the man must submit himself to Christ. The man must submit himself to the righteousness of God, which is what? God's divine order. To deal with the nations, to teach the nation, you understand? To set his house in order, to teach his wife and his children. The woman's role, she must what? Submit herself wholeheartedly in everything to her husband. You understand? And be able to educate the children at the husband's command. And put her brick in to, well, to be a what? To be an example to the other sisters, to be an example to the young daughters of Zion. That's the point. But as long as the men and the women, none of you want to do that, your prayers will be hindered. There's no if or maybe about it. They will be hindered. Okay? Go back to James now. James chapter 4, verse 7. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 7. Read. Submit yourselves. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will mm -hmm. flee from you. Come on. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. What did he say? What's that last part? Ye double-minded. 
It says, ye double-minded. Because you see what we read in 2 Chronicles 1, verse 7 through 12? Is because King Solomon wasn't double-minded about these requests. He was clear, he understood exactly what he was asking from the Most High God, and he was not double-minded. Give me that in Sirach 128. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 28. Watch this thing. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 28. Distrust not the fear of the Lord when thou art poor, and come not unto him with a double heart. Don't come to the Most High God with a double heart. You are one foot in and one foot out. The Lord is not going to honor anything you say because you have no faith. You have no loyalty. You, you, one foot is out, one foot is in. You are lukewarm. You are disloyal. You are a disloyal, dishonorable servant. You can't be double-minded. You understand? Let your yeas be yeas. Let your nays be nay. That's it. That's what the Lord wants. Okay? Watch this. Give me... You know what? Go back to where was that? James 4. I don't think I want to go somewhere else. Go back to James. Okay, James 4, verse 8. Once again, James 4, verse 8. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 8. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Read. Cleanse, cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Come on, next verse. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning mm -hmm. and your joy to heaviness. Read that again. Why would the Lord say this something like this? The most said God is saying, listen, be afflicted and mourn. Why would he say this? Read it again, verse 9. The book of James chapter 4, verse 9. Come on. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. So now the Lord is commanding us to be afflicted, to mourn, to weep. Our laughter must be turned to mourning and our joy to heaviness. Why is the Lord commanding us to do this thing? Give me that in 2 Corinthians 7 verse 9. We read this all the time. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 9. Watch this. This is why the Lord is saying what he's saying right here in the book of James chapter 4 verse 9. Watch this. 2 Corinthians 7, verse 9. Read that. 2 Book of Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9. Now I rejoice. Not that okay, you are made okay. so. Wait, 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 wait. So what I need you to do is don't call it and now don't call it and look for this precept. Go to the precept, call it and read it. Okay, read that, verse 9. Yes, sir. 2 Book of Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9. Now I rejoice. Not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. You see what the Lord is looking for? It says, I rejoice. Not that you were made sorry, but yet ye sorrow to repentance. Meaning your sorrow must be what? You must be afflicted. You must mourn. You must weep. Your laughter must turn into what? Into heaviness. Why? Because you are sorrowing to repentance. Meaning what? You regret the evils that you've done. The laws of the Most High God that you've broken, now you're asking the Lord to forgive you and you're asking for forgiveness. You are humbling yourself before the Lord. That's what the Lord is looking for. You must sorrow because you want to repent because you realize the evils that you was doing before in the sight of the Most High God. Come on. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner. You see that thing? So that because you were made, Wait, wait, wait. You were made sorry after a godly manner. What is that godly manner? The laws of God were brought to you. The laws of God were brought to you. Now you understand, wait a minute. I didn't know that was a sin. I didn't know I was doing that. I didn't know there is no way I'm like this because of one X, Y, and Z that is written in the law. I didn't know. Now that I know, it says what? You were made what? For you were made sorry after a godly manner. You were made sorry after a godly manner. Now you are given a chance to repent now. Go ahead. That ye might receive damage by us in nothing. Next verse. Come on. For godly sorrow worketh repentant to salvation, not to be repented of. You see what he's saying? For godly sorrow, because godly sorrow, that is what the Lord is looking for. Godly sorrow. 
Don't be sorrowful because you now you say you realizing that now you have to relinquish. You must let go of all the lusts that you are fulfilling in the world. That's not the Lord. That's not the sorrow the Lord is looking for. The sorrow is you must sorrow to return because you're returning back to Him. That's the sorrow, and you are letting go of the evils that you was doing in the world. Okay, read that part again, verse ten. Second Book of Corinthians, chapter seven, verse ten. Mm -hmm. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. Come on. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. Because what's what's the sorrow of the world? Yeah, but see, people are be, be people be marching, people be toy toying. You understand? People be uh, shutting down uh, government buildings and all of that. That's so. That's the that's the sorrow of the world. That's the sorrow of the world work at death. That's not the sorrow the Lord is looking for. Hey, we must support the LGBTQYZ, XY, and whatever. That's sorrow. That's the. That's not the sorrow. That's not the godly sorrow. That's the sorrow of the world. Because you sorrow with the world because of what? Because of the sin that they're in. You support them in their evils. That's not the sorrow the Lord is looking for. Watch this. Give me the book of Lamentations, chapter 1, verse 12. Watch this. Lamentations, chapter 1. Lamentations 1, verse 12. Read what you got. The book of Lamentations, chapter 1, verse 12. Read. Is it nothing to you, all ye that pass by? Behold, and see if there be any sorrow like unto my sorrow. You see what Jeremiah Which, is saying? He says, see if there be any sorrow like unto my sorrow. Because Jeremiah was, what was his sorrow? His sorrow, he was sorrowing to repentance. He was teaching the people the law. And what was paining him was seeing the fact that he was teaching, but the people were not sorrowing to repentance, but they had what? They were worldly sorrow. Their sorrow was towards the world, not towards the most High God. They were not sorrowing to repentance. That's why it says, is there, if there be any sorrow like unto my sorrow. What was Jeremiah doing? He was teaching the commandments and the people was not repenting. The people was, our people in Babylon, we was rebellious as hell. Okay? So that's why he was what? He was like, he was like, if there be any sorrow like unto my sorrow. Don't you see what's going on to Israel? Don't you see what, look at our sons and daughters. Look at fathers and mothers. Look at the evils that they are doing. None of them are sorrowing to repentance. But when the Jeremiah is bringing the word, there was complaining. You understand? Watch this. Give me Psalms 51 verse 17. Psalm 51. Psalm 51, verse 17. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 61. No, verse 51, 51, 5 1, 51, verse 17. The book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. You see that thing? The, sac the sacrifices that the Lord wants, it's a broken spirit. Because you sorrow to repentance. That's the sorrow. That's the weeping. That's the heaviness that the Lord wants. Meaning this thing must pain you say. You mean to. I was doing all these evils. Because guess what. In order for you to be aware of that. What must be brought to your attention. The laws of God must be brought to your attention. So you can understand the evils that you are, that the evils that you are doing. Or the evils that you were doing. And still are doing. The laws of God must be brought to your attention. Read that part again. The book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse 17. Come on. The sacrifices, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. The Lord wants to see that thing. Come on. A broken it, and contrite heart. A broken and contrite heart. It says a broken and a contrite heart. Come on. Thou would not despise. Thou will not what? Despise. The Lord will not despise a broken and a what? And a contrite heart. That's not a regular Negro word. Contrite. C-O-N-T-R-I-T-E. Contrite. 
the definition of the word contrite says feeling or expressing remorse at the recognition that one has done wrong. You see that part right there? Because guess what? If you are, if if something is brought that bra, you brother, this is the, the problem you are dealing with. Sister, this is your problem right here, but you don't fix it. Do you have a contrite heart? Do you have a broken spirit? No, you don't. You don't. I'll prove it. Sirach 1929. Read it. No, no, read verse 26. Sirach 1926. Read that thing. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 19, verse 26. There is a wicked man that hangeth down his head sadly, mm -hmm. but inwardly is full of deceit. But what? Inwardly is full of deceit. But inwardly, he is full of deceit. You see that? Inwardly, is full of deceit. He doesn't really want to repent. But he makes it seem like he wants to repent. I bring this all the time because that's what I'm seeing on a daily. You understand? I see that all the time. Brothers be saying, yes, I see it. And, but they don't do it because they are full of deceit. Sisters too. Okay, read that again. Verse 26, read it. Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 19, verse 26. Come on. There is a wicked man that hangeth down his head sadly, but inwardly he is full of deceit. But inwardly he is full of deceit. Come on. Casting down his company. Come on, I need you to follow me. Before I speak, don't you are really messing me up here. Okay, come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 19, verse 26. There is a wicked man that hangeth down his head sad, but inwardly he is full of deceit. But inwardly he is full of deceit. Go ahead, now, verse 27 now. Casting down his countenance. Doing what? Casting down his countenance. Casting down his countenance, meaning looking sad, looking, appearing broken. Go ahead. And making as if he heard not. Making as if he had not. Because if you make it as if you had not, guess what you are doing? It's like, I, 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 don't, I didn't really understand what you said the last time. Making as if he had not. Because the first time, he made it seem like he had you. And then now he's coming the second time as if he had not you the first time. Read. Casting down his countenance and making as if he heard not. Where he is not known. He will do thee a mischief before thou be away. Because it says he is what? He is full of deceit. So mischief is working with him all the time. You understand? But that's not the spirit the Lord is looking for. Because that's a double-minded spirit right there. Like we just read in James 4 verse 9. Watch this. No, James 4 verse 8. We read about that in James 4 verse 8. Go back to Psalms 51 verse 17. The book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse 17. Come on. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, mm -hmm. a broken and contrite heart. Oh God, thou wilt not despise. The Lord will not despise that. Because why? Because you are feeling sorrowful. You are sorry about what you did and you're going to show with your actions how sorry you are. That's why it says a contrite, a broken and a contrite, uh, a contrite heart the most high God will not despise that. Why? Because you're showing repentance. How do you show repentance? By your works. Your sorrow is sorrowing to repentance. Because, give me that, um, it's not part of my notes. Let me look at it. Let me look for that precept. Yes, give me Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 31. Watch this. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verses 31. Come on. Then shall you remember your own evil ways. That's what the Lord wants. You understand? When you sorrow to repentance, you're going to remember your own evil ways. How are you going to remember your own evil ways? Give me John 14, 26. John 14, verse 26. It says, then shall ye remember your own evil ways. Watch this. John chapter 14, verse 26, because you have forgotten your evil ways. 
This was gonna bring this one. This was gonna bring to your remembrance your own evil ways. In your own evil ways, you're gonna remember who you are. John fourteen verse twenty six. Watch this. The book of John chapter fourteen verse twenty six. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, mm -hmm. he will teach you all things. He shall what? Teach you all things. He shall teach you all things. I need you to read the right words here. He shall teach you all things. Read that part again. He shall teach you all things. So the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, he shall teach you all things. You understand? So there's teaching. You need to be taught first, then what happens next? Go ahead. And bring all things to your remembrance. That's the point. That's the point right there. So before you can be brought to your remembrance, guess what needs to happen first? You must be taught. The laws of God must be brought to you. Romans 7 verse 7. We're coming back. Romans 7 verse 7. Read that. That's what I want right there. Romans chapter 7, verse 7. The law, what there must be, the laws of God must be taught to you first. Once the laws of God are taught to you, what will be brought to your remembrance? Your own evil ways will be brought to your remembrance because you done for God. Romans 7, verse 7. Watch this. The book of Romans 7, verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Come on. Nay. I had not known sin, but by the law. I had not known sin, but by the law. The only way you will remember your own evil ways is when the laws of God are taught to you to bring to your remembrance your own evil ways. Go back to John 14, 26, once again. The book of John, chapter 14, verses 26. Come on. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Right. Whatsoever, whatsoever I have said unto you. You see that thing? Whatsoever I have said unto you. So what we are reading here is what? What we are reading is what the most High God will bring to our remembrance. What will, we, what will, will he bring to our remembrance? The, our own evil way. So we remember the evils we've done. Because right now our people, yeah, consciously they can pick up, you know what, this thing is wrong. But guess what? There's no laws of God to what? To, to hold them accountable that, yeah, that thing is wrong right there. Yes, you are right, it's wrong. But because when you go and sleep with your neighbor's wife, you know that's wrong. But when somebody comes with a, a prophet, brings the Bible to you and teach you what you are doing is wrong, they tell you, because you know that's wrong, but somebody comes and tells you that's wrong. That's where the problem comes in. They don't want to be told. No, don't judge me. Listen, that's wrong. So it is brought to you because you pat yourself on the back when you are doing it. But when the prophet comes, the Lord is the one that's bringing the judgment. The Lord is the one that's bringing the correction to bring to your remembrance this thing is wrong and you must stop doing it. Okay? Go back to Ezekiel 36 verse 31. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 31. Read. Then shall you remember your own evil ways. You will remember your own evil ways because you're going to be taught the laws of God to bring to your remembrance your own evil ways. Go ahead. And your doings that were not good. And your doings that were not good, meaning what? Contrary to God's commandments. Read. And shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. And ye shall what? Read that part again. And shall what to yourself? And shall loathe yourselves. That's the sorrow to repentance right there. That's the godly sorrow. That's when you have a contrite heart, a contrite spirit. That's the godly too. That's the, that's the sorrow to repentance. And shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. You see that thing? That's, how, that, that's, that's, that's when you sorrow to repentance. When you loathe yourself, you despise and hate yourself for the evils that you've done. Not only so, but you must now apply. Don't be stuck at step two. 
You must apply that stuff now. Yes, you must, you lo you're going to load yourself. Okay, now what? What are you going to do about it? You must apply to show the law that really you, you what? You are worthy of the grace that he extended unto you. That's the point. Watch this. Go back to James 4 now. James 4, we're going to read verse 11. No, we're going to read 10 and 11. Okay. James chapter 4, verse 10. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. To humble yourself, meaning what? You, you fear the Lord. <clears throat> Excuse me. You fear the Lord, and guess what you will do? You will give your ear to instructions of wisdom. That's when that's the only time when the Lord will lift you up. Okay, come on. Speak not evil one of another. You see that thing right there? You see that scripture, that class we're going over about lying and deceit and all that? Read that part again, verse 11. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 11. Read. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He says, speak not evil one of another. Don't speak evil of one another. Go ahead. Brethren, he that, speak, he that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother. You speak evil. Hold on. You speak evil of your brother and judgeth his brother. What is that talking about? The judging your brother. You talk about condemnation. You understand? Slander. Go ahead. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judges his brother mm -hmm. speaketh evil of the law. Speaketh evil of the law. We're gonna he's gonna he, James is gonna explain to us what's going on here. Go ahead. And judges the law. And judges the law. Go ahead. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but to judge. But a judge, but a what? You condemn, you slander. Okay, that's what he's saying right there. But what is the law that is being referenced here? What's the law? Give me James 2. You know what I want. James chapter 2. The book of James. Chapter 2, verse 8. Come on. If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, mm -hmm. thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. That's the law right there. So there was, was the law. The law is love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. The well doing that, you, that you're going you're gonna to show yourself of is what? You're going to not speak evil of your neighbor. You're not going to slander your brother or your sister. You understand? If there's issues, you talk to your brother face to face about the, the issues you got. You understand? Read that part again, verse 8. The book of James 2, verse 8. Read. If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. Give me Mark 12, verse 29. Mark 12. The book of Mark, chapter 12, verses 29. Read. And Jesus answered him, the first of all, the commandment is here, here, O Israel. The no, Lord, no. our God. Read that right. Okay, read that right. Come on, come on. Verse 29 again. The book of Mark chapter 12, verse 29. And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. He says, Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Come on. And thou shalt love thy Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. So now what you want to do is don't be rushing the scriptures. Just read clearly so you can see the words that are written in the book. I want to get the meat of the bone. Come on, you're messing me up. Come on, verse 31. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Come on. There is none other commandment greater than these. So now what we're reading here, verse 31, is what James just said. It's the same thing that James is explaining in James chapter 4, verse 11. What law is he talking about? 
the royal law. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Read verse 31 again. The book, the book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 31. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. So Christ is telling us what? He's telling there's two commandments because Christ broke the Bible into two, two categories. Love the most high God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. Secondly, love your neighbor as yourself. That's it. That is what Christ was explaining. James is explaining the same thing here. Go back to James 4 now, verse 11. James chapter 4, verse 11. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 11. Read. Speak not evil one of another. Brethren, he that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law and so judgeth when the law. It says, speaketh evil of the law. What law is that? The law that says, love your neighbor as yourself. You are speaking evil of that law because you're not applying it. You are speaking evil of your neighbor. You are grudging. You are slandering. That's why there's wars and fightings among. Because brothers and sisters, they don't want to apply the royal law. Read that part again. The book of James, chapter 2, verse 4. No, no, 4, verse 11. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 11. Speak not evil one of another. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. Read. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. But a judge. But this judge is not the wise judge. It's an unjust judge. That's what he says. But judge. He says, but what? But a judge. Because they slander. They don't. It's not righteous judgment. It's not sound judgment. You understand? Okay. So I'm going to end the class right here. Okay. Let's break bread. In the honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That gave his life for us. That you also may have life this day. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This is doing remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had sub saying, this cup is the new testament in my blood. This to ye, as oft as he drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and make me sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Most High hand for that thing. All praise to the Most High God.